Paul Rykoff, known uh, Tim Walls for years, as we talked about on the show. Here he is, founder, independent uh, Veterans of America, independent Americans podcast host. Welcome back. Um, I know you, the context is you worked with them, you know, in your capacity in that organization and others on veterans issues, right? So you knew him in the Congress. What about these issues we were talking to Congressman Waltz about at the top of the hour, these accusations about what he said about his service? Yeah, everybody who's worked in the veterans community at, at the VSOs, the IAVA, the VFW, American Legion, they all knew Tim Waltz because he was the ranking member on the committee. So on everything from the GI Bill to suicide legislation, VA reform, mm -hmm. he was in all the meetings, he was in all the hearings, he was at all the press conferences, so he's known. I, I think this has really devolved into a pretty nasty political fight over his service. I think the opportunity for Tim Waltz now tonight is to set the record straight. Uh, I've said this before. Yeah. I, I think he, the, the campaign has been sloppy in putting out things like his timeline and his record. I think they can do a much better job because of that. Because can a number of things be true at once? In other words, he could have been a great guy working with you. He did a great work for veterans issues, did probably terrific work in his military career, but maybe misrepresented some of that needs to explain to himself. Totally. I mean, there's a couple pieces of this, and you, you broke them apart pretty well. I mean, the main attack is that they're calling him a coward. They said his unit went and he shouldn't. He, he should have gone. Yeah. Now, the National Guard has said he, he retired properly. He went went through the process and he could have gotten out appropriately and he did. That's what the National Guard in his state has said. The misrepresentation of his rank, he's definitely got to clear that up and he's already addressed the issue of saying he carried a, a weapon in combat, right? So there's some stuff he's got to address and I think that will help him set the record straight but I don't think the attacks are going to stop. I mean we've yeah. seen this every single political cycle every time a veteran runs, especially Republicans attacking Democrats and they have Democrats on the defense now. Well that's a larger issue, right? We were talking about in our special covers the other night whether Democrats now uh, um, and for years, you're right, the Republicans have been seen as the quote-unquote patriotic party. They've owned that, right? Right, right, right. And Demo Are Democrats this week trying to take some of that back? And is this part of pushing back the other way? I mean, what do you think? They are. I mean, this goes back to John Kerry and Max yeah. Cleland, and almost every candidate in my generation has been under attack on, on their service, in part because it works. Whether it's true or not, you can smear folks, and that might impact some, you know, low-information voters. Tonight is what you get at every convention. Usually, both conventions pick one night to talk national security and defense. Tonight is that night. Tim Walsh is going to talk a lot about his service, his lifetime of service, but you're also going to hear from other high-profile veterans in the Democratic Party. You're going to hear from Pete Buttigieg, who also served uh, after 9-11 in combat. You're going to hear from Wes Moore, who is an 82nd right. Airborne veteran. You may see them all on stage together. Usually the Republicans and Democrats do that to try to say, hey, we are better on national security, and then it's up to Americans to decide. And talking about independence, I think this moves them. Tonight yes. is a key night for independence. If you want to get independence, you got to talk national security, right. you got to talk defense, you got to talk military, you got to talk the border. One, and other things that, that are really hitting people in their gut. One thing about uh, Walls on the, uh, the timing, he did uh, re-enlist for what it's worth after 9-11. So he could have retired much earlier after 20 He could have gotten out after 20. Right, that's and he clear. got back in. And he so went that's back one in. Point. That's, now, that part is clear. The other thing, it's funny watching these walkthroughs. Maybe it's just a TV person watching it. But remember, <laughs> he hasn't used a prompter much. That, that rally was the first time. So he's probably has a few more questions than other people. I have one more question for you. We've talked yeah. about RFK a lot on the show when yeah. you're on. What about all this talk that maybe he drops out Friday? And I don't know if he didn't endorse Trump or not, but he might, and what do you think that does to Maybe the, the crazy train voters? is finally coming to an end. I've, I've said it before. He doesn't have much support from independents, you know, small micro digits across the country, but if he drops out, it's a win for Trump. Yeah. Everybody knows now it's clear. There was a talk in the beginning that he was taking more away from Biden than he was from Trump, and I said, said with you, I didn't think that was true, and he's definitely taking more away from Trump with Harris at the top of the ticket. So yes. if he drops out, this definitely benefits Trump, and I think it, it shows his shadiness. I mean, he's been shady, he's been inconsistent, he's run a sloppy campaign. That's why he's not getting yep. much support. It's not why he's raising much money. And most independents want a better candidate. So yeah. maybe four years from now, we'll get a more legitimate, stronger independent candidate. But right now... That's one you run, Paul. Yeah, no, maybe you, Connor. Well, I don't know. That's <laughs> definitely not going to happen. But Michelle Obama's more likely to run for something before the... After the, last night, that was, she won't, that was she'll impressive. Never, she'll never run either. Um, uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, interesting. Uh, Paul Rykoff, as always. You we got appreciate it, that. Now,